So the puzzle we're looking at reads like this. 50 coins were put into an automatic coin counter. Uh, the total value the machine calculated was $1. Okay, so we're looking for coins uh, equaling value $1. Uh, can we find out how many coins were pennies, nickels, dimes, and half dollars? Um, so let's look at this. Um, look at the limiting factors uh, for each coin. Uh, so the first possibility is half dollars, and so a half dollar is worth 50 cents, so there's a maximum of two of those. Uh, but if you remember your constraints, we're looking for uh, 50 coins um, that equals to 100 cents. Well, this is already 100 cents, and we only have two coins, uh, so we're going to be able to eliminate at least one of those coins. Uh, let's look at quarters. Uh, of course, uh, they're worth 25 cents. There are four in a dollar. Um, there's a maximum of four uh, within the dollar, but again, if we hit that maximum of 100 cents, we only have four coins, so uh, we can eliminate uh, one of those from consideration. Uh, if we look at dimes, uh, there were 10 cents. There's a maximum uh, of uh, 10 and a dollar. Um, again, 10 is not enough to be uh, 50 coins, uh, so we can eliminate at least one of those from consideration. Uh, we look at nickels. Um, are worth five cents, so there's a maximum of 20 of those. Uh, again, we can eliminate one uh, of those. And then we look at pennies. Uh, pennies are worth one cent. Uh, there's a maximum of a hundred uh, and a dollar. Um, if we look at our problem, uh, they must be in increments of five. Um, that's because our target is a hundred. A hundred is evenly divisible by five. And if we look at the other coin values, uh, the other coin values are also evenly divisible by five, um, so, there, so there will be no uh, number of pennies uh, that's not also evenly divisible by five to make our, our maximum of 100 cents. Uh, so that makes it a little bit easier to look at the problem. Um, so when we look at pennies, uh, we'll say each penny on the screen is going to be uh, worth uh, five. So imagine them kind of stacked into the screen. Uh, in groups of five, okay? Uh, so if we do that, uh, we could have up to uh, 100 pennies or 20 stacks of five. Um, but when we look at our original problem statement, uh, we have a um, maximum of 100, 100 cents, but we can have a maximum of uh, 50 coins. So we can't have 100 pennies. Uh, we'll have to get rid of that maximum, say we can only have a uh, maximum of 50 pennies. Um, so that gives us kind of a starting point to look at. Uh, but if we look at uh, 50 pennies, the value is only equal to 50, so we don't hit our mark of 100 cents. Uh, so we can eliminate a group of five of those pennies. Uh, and so we'll start at 45 uh, pennies. Okay. Uh, so as we look at 45 pennies, uh, we look at what's remaining. And what's remaining is we need five coins to make 50 coins and we still have 55 cents of value left. So my best shot at at this point is to say, well, let's put a quarter in uh, and see what that does. That would take one of those five coins off uh, and sub subtract 25 cents of value out of the 55 cents left. That would leave us with four coins left and 30 cents. Uh, so as I think about the next uh, highest value of dimes, uh, 10 cents, um, if I do one of those, that, that uh, brings me down to three coins and 20 cents, uh, but it looks like I'm going to need two, um, and that would bring me down to two coins left uh, and 10 cents, uh, which works out, because uh, if I look at the, the next coin uh, worth five cents a nickel, uh, two nickels is uh, worth uh, 10 cents and so there's one solution uh, to this problem uh, 45 pennies one quarter two dimes and two nickels is equal to 50 coins and if we add up the amounts for those it's equal to uh, 100 cents so this was just I mean one way to kind of uh, on the fly look at this and uh, logically look at the problem uh, on on how to do this uh, another way uh, would be brute force 
So the way we're going to brute force this is use a computer program. Um, so we'll create this and we'll just go through every combination of coins uh, until we get the values we need. So um, let's start out, we'll, we'll create some variables. Uh, so I'll create int for pennies, uh, since we'll have an integer value, uh, number of pennies at the end. Um, we'll create the same thing for nickels. Um, dimes, um, quarters, and of course half dollars. Um, and then we'll need to set the amount. Um, so what's our maximum amount? Well for this problem it was 100 cents. Uh, we'll go ahead and put a comment statement in here saying <clears throat> basically one dollar is equal to 100 cents so that's why I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, just deal with it in cents uh, to make it easy so amount equals 100. Uh, then we need a variable for uh, the number of coins and I'm just going to call it max coins and we'll set that equal to uh, 50. Okay, and now I'm going to um, I guess set a limit where he's eventually going to go through a loop here to go from um, zero to however many coins. So for pennies uh, we're going to have a maximum of the amount which is 100 divided by the value of pennies which is 1. Um, and so I can do this for each uh, value of uh, currency. So nickels will do the same thing. The max number of nickels is going to be the amount, or 100 divided by 5. We don't need to check um, numbers of nickels or pennies more than those amounts uh, because uh, they've gone, they've already gone over the 100 cents. So it wouldn't make sense to do that. So we'll go ahead and do that for each. Um, coin, so dimes divided by 10, quarters. Uh, divided by 25 and half dollars uh, divided by 50. Um, you can also see that we're probably again like we we saw in the uh, logic problem before uh, actually we're checking too many uh, pennies um, because we're over the 50 uh, max coin so even though we get a hundred we're at, with our initial calculation uh, we can put an if statement in here saying okay if max pennies goes over um, the, the maximum number of coins uh, we can set the number the max number of pennies equal to uh, the same thing as the max number of coins okay um, not really necessary for brute forcing I mean we're just eliminating some of the values that we don't really need to check uh, because it's it, you know uh, we, we've already exceeded the max coin amount so I can put the same thing in we don't really need this for nickels but um, later on if we run this program for something other than a hundred uh, this could come into play where we're not where we don't need to check uh, these for other amounts so I'll just go ahead and put the same thing in if max nickels happen to be bigger than max coins it's not in this particular case but uh, again if we change this amount in the future uh, that could be a thing so I'll go ahead and put the same thing in for dimes uh, quarters and half dollars okay didn't really need to do that but um, just trying to make it slightly more efficient uh, which is not really the name of the game in brute force uh, where we're checking every combination okay so we've got our stuff set up uh, now we need to set up a loop okay and we'll start with pennies uh, so I'll say for uh, P uh, equal to zero so we're gonna start with zero pennies uh, where do we want to stop well uh, as long as P or is less than or equal to uh, the max uh, number of pennies, uh, we want to keep checking. Uh, and we're going to check each increment. So we're going to increment by one or uh, P plus plus. Okay, so that sets up our loop to do that. Uh, and we're just going to do a nesting. So we can try every combination uh, using nested loop. So in that loop, uh, we're also going to check the nickel values okay and so we're going to say n uh, start at zero less than max nickels uh, and increment that by one and then we'll go on to dimes and do the same thing d equals zero and we're going to go from zero to the max number of dimes uh, d plus plus and you see kind of this nesting is going to continue and so for every value of zero pennies is going to try every value of nickels, every value of dimes, and so on. Um, so not a super efficient 
uh, algorithm for humans to use, uh, but for computers, um, we hopefully this will run uh, still fairly quickly, um, even though the number of calculations it's having to do. So we'll do the same thing for quarters, from zero to max quarters, another loop, and for half dollars. And so we have our nested loop set up. Uh, and then we need to check uh, to see if any of these combinations of coins actually meets our conditions. So there's going to be two conditions here. The first one uh, we'll set up where uh, P, the number of pennies, plus uh, the number of nickels times 5, which is the value of nickels, uh, plus dimes times 10, plus quarters times 25, plus half dollars times 50. Uh, and that should be equal to our amount. Uh, if you remember we had amount up here so it's a hundred uh, so as long as all our uh, values add up uh, to the amount and so I'm going to use a logical and here uh, double ampersand so this condition has to be true for this statement to be true and the second part uh, and the second part I'm just going to check the number of coins so number of pennies plus the number of nickels plus the number of dimes plus the number of quarters plus the number of half dollars has to be equal to uh, if you remember at the beginning um, 50 or we set that uh, in max coins okay so as long as we hit the right number of coins uh, that should be good and so if we hit that condition uh, we will have um, a valid combination of coins uh, that is 50 coins and equals up to uh, one dollar or hundred cents so then we can say uh, we have p pennies uh, in nickels um, and d dimes quarters uh, q and h half dollars okay and that makes and we'll go ahead and put in an amount just to double check uh, and make sure we got a, a hundred as the amount um, cents with uh, and we'll go ahead and add all those coins together again just to say there's that many coins uh, we shouldn't have to do that because it should be 50 but uh, just to double check everything we'll we'll do that and go ahead and put an in line in here okay and so we'll run that and let's see what happens. So we'll compile this and run it. And it comes up with uh, two solutions. Um, so one with uh, 45 pennies, two nickels, two dimes and a quarter. Um, again, zero half dollars, 100 cents, 50 coins. And it also comes up with a second solution. Uh, 40 pennies, eight nickels, two dimes. Um, and even though it was kind of an exhaustive brute force process to go through every combination, notice it took the computer uh, less than a second uh, to come up with the answer. Let's close that. Um, and just for the fun of it, let's go in and change this to uh, $200 or $2 and see how many different ways uh, that can happen. I would expect it to be uh, a little bit more. And we do come up with a, a few more solutions to make uh, $2. So uh, lots more combinations uh, uh, of this. Um, but kind of doing it the brute force way uh, sometimes is, is a quicker way uh, using computers. Uh, so hopefully this was interesting and, and helpful.